Now we're gonna go over red meat association and cardiovascular disease. We know the Western lifestyle and the Western diet is associated with cardiovascular disease. It has been accepted by all major professional societies that red meat itself was a significant component of the Western diet that contributed to heart disease. This was based on lots of studies up through 2012. It was assumed that saturated fat was the culprit. Recently, high protein diets with high fat content have become popular, so fat is being restudied. I'll review those results in an upcoming talk when I review fat. This assessment has made some people question the cardiovascular risk of red meat too, and since this talk is about red meat, I'll focus on the red meat data. This analysis from 2014 studied 12,000 adults for 22 years. In this study, there was no association between red meat and coronary heart disease. And this literature review in 2015 looked at multiple studies, including eight prospective cohort trials. In four of the eight studies, there was no significant association. This publication was just a literature review where the authors comment on various studies, and of course, that means that in four of eight, there was an association between red meat and heart disease. Nonetheless, some have challenged the belief that red meat causes cardiovascular disease. So, does red meat cause heart disease? Let's look at the medical evidence, starting with a recent meta-analysis of many studies. Instead of cherry-picking a few studies out of many that show no harm, this is an analysis published in 2014 of all relevant studies. With a meta-analysis, you combine results from more than one study into a larger database. This study pooled 13 cohort studies together. So instead of just 12,000 people, we have 1.6 million people followed for many years. And red and processed meats were associated with a higher risk of cardiovascular disease in this study. A year later, in 2015, there is another meta-analysis with more trials, this time 17 cohort studies and nine other articles. This time, the goal was to assess mortality associated with the amount of red meat that was consumed. And like the other study, red meat was associated with an increased risk of heart disease and cancer death and all-cause death. And each serving per day increased the risk even further. Basically, the more you eat, the greater the risk of death, starting with even a small amount of red meat consumption. There is an interesting finding, though. The mortality risk of unprocessed red meat was greater in the U.S. than in European or Asian populations. Why? Is it because of how we cook meat in the U.S.? We tend to grill meat. Uh, as we discussed earlier when reviewing cancer, this method of cooking increases the production of toxins from the meat. Perhaps these toxins contribute to heart disease. Note though that processed red meat, for example bacon, sausage, lunch meat, jerky, was equally associated with heart disease and death in all populations. Finally, let's go back to 2013 to another meta-analysis. This study assessed if the impact on heart disease is significant enough that it impacts all-cause mortality. In other words, if you look at all causes of death, for example, car accidents, cancer, pneumonia, heart attacks, you know, etc., if the meat impact on heart disease and on cancer is truly great enough, then the overall impact on mortality will be affected even when diluted by deaths that are not related to total meat consumption. Nine studies had enough information to be pooled together to assess meat consumption and all-cause mortality. And both processed meat and unprocessed red meat were risks for death of any cause, with almost a 29% increased likelihood of dying from any cause in the high total meat consuming group. Well, that's not too surprising since meat seems to increase death from heart disease and cancer, and those are the top two causes of death in the United States. Science has generated dozens of cohort trials that have prospectively followed millions of people over many years, even decades. Prospective means that we followed the patients as time passes, which is better than looking back over time after they've had a heart attack. Some of the trials show no increased risk, but almost all of them show an increased risk of heart disease with meat consumption. So red meat consumption likely increases the risk of heart disease. But is this absolute proof? No, 
cohort trials are tricky. These types of trials cannot absolutely prove that meat is the cause of heart disease. Now, don't get me wrong. We have such a large database of statistics with millions of people followed over time that we're absolutely certain that people that eat red meat die from heart disease more often than people that don't eat red meat. That is fact. But we cannot prove cause and effect. We cannot prove that this type of trial, that meat is the cause for increased death. Maybe meat is just a marker. Maybe people that eat red meat have a personality pattern that leads them to pursue some other risk that is in fact the actual cause. We looked at colon cancer earlier and were convinced that red meat is a cause. These are the same types of trials. What's the difference? Well, one difference is the strength of effect. The relative risk of heart disease is 1.15 with consumption of meat daily, whereas for colon cancer it is 1.43 per portion consumed per week. This means that people that eat red meat just once per week have a 43% increased risk of colon cancer compared to non-meat consumers. For heart disease, people have to eat meat daily and they have a risk of 15% greater than non-consumers. Non so the colon cancer risk is much, much stronger. These types of trials attempt to control for confounding conditions. They keep track of smoking, exercise, aspirin intake, etc. But with colon cancer, there just are not very many lifestyle factors that impact the disease. So it's much easier to be comfortable that we're comparing patients that are identical in terms of relevant risk factors other than the amount of meat they eat. But with heart disease, there are many other factors that also impact heart disease risk, like cholesterol, blood pressure, exercise, smoking, and on and on. It's more difficult to control for all of these factors. So although the data is strongly suggestive that red meat causes heart disease, the debate is likely to continue. I suspect we'll need a randomized controlled trial to resolve the issue. This is the most powerful trial we can conduct because it allows us to compare two similar groups except for the red meat consumption. A randomized trial hasn't been done yet though because they're very difficult to do. Basically, you have to flip a coin and based on the result you tell a person that he or she must eat meat or not eat meat for years to come so that we can find out the impact of meat. Can you imagine people enrolling in a trial like this where a coin toss will determine what they're going to eat for years? But believe it or not, there is now a randomized trial going on in Spain. So hopefully we'll have a definite answer in the near future. But until then, the best evidence we have tells us that red meat probably causes heart disease.